Welcome back to 525 on your Tuesday morning. President Biden is calling on the Senate to pass House Resolution 1 on the heels of signing an executive order himself directing federal agencies to expand access to voter registration and election information. So Democrats are trying to solidify support for that bill, which touches on virtually every aspect of the electoral process. It passed on a near party line vote last week in the House, but the bill's fate is uncertain in the Senate. The bill would enact automatic voter registration as well as mandate same day registration. States would be required to offer 15 days of early voting and allow no excuse absentee voting. It would also restore voting rights to felons after they've completed their sentences. The bill also prohibits voter roll purges and partisan gerrymandering of congressional districts. It also imposes new campaign finance rules and requires presidential nominees to release 10 years of tax returns. Democrats say the bill will help stifle voter suppression attempts. Republicans say the bill is one unwanted federal interference in state's authority to conduct their own elections. So while voting laws are a high priority on the federal level, of course, they are also a major focus for state legislatures all around the country, including right here in Missouri. That's right. This morning, we're taking an in-depth look at what potential new laws would mean for you at your polling place when you get ready to cast your vote. Let's get to 41 Action News reporter Dan Cohen joining us live with a deeper dive on that this morning. Dan, tell us about this. Yeah, Taylor and Lindsay, good morning. More than 3 million votes were cast here in Missouri in the 2020 presidential election. Future elections and how you get to the polling place and how the process works might be affected. And House Bill 334 is a big catalyst for that potential change. And it's working its way through the Missouri legislature. It's awaiting a hearing in the state Senate. Here are the key components of House Bill 334, which again was approved by the House. If you vote in person or vote absentee in person, photo ID would be required. If you don't have a photo ID, House Bill 334 says a provisional ballot would be cast, but it would not be counted unless a voter returns to their polling place with these forms of identification. You can see them on your screen. It includes potentially a birth certificate, a marriage license, a divorce decree, a social security card, naturalization papers. Voting rights advocates say this law, House Bill 334, limits access to the ballot. Let's keep in mind that Missouri already requires all voters to show identification at the polls. What legislation like House Bill 334 would do is take away some of the forms of ID that people can currently show, including a voter registration card. The document that is sent by the election authority that verifies that you are registered to vote for that election. I spoke to one of the co-sponsors of House Bill 334. Representative Chris Sander represents District 33 here in Missouri. He says this law prevents voter fraud. He also said it would clear up instances when multiple, multiple voters have the same or similar names are in one precinct. And if you have to ask somebody 20 questions to make sure they are who they say they are because they brought in a document that has a name similar to four other people with the same name and you're precinct, then it makes it difficult. I don't think it's unacceptable to require a photo. House Bill 334 is not the only election or voting law currently working its way through the Missouri legislature. Taylor and Lindsay, there are more bills in the House with similar photo ID provisions. There's also a bill working its way through the Senate. Voting and elections, a clear priority for Missouri lawmakers. Back to you. So, Dan, obviously that's what's going on in Missouri. How about Kansas? No stranger to voter law there. What's currently happening in that state? There was actually a recent decision in the United States Supreme Court, Taylor, in December. They rejected an appeal from Kansas to bring back that citizenship requirement for voter registration. But there are photo ID requirements, according to the Kansas Secretary of State. We have them on the screen right here. A driver's license, a passport, military ID, an ID card issued by a Native American tribe, an employee badge or ID issued by a government office. Again, these are acceptable forms of photo, photo ID when you go to vote in person. But again, this is something that is happening all across the country right now, a sharper focus on voting and election law. Mm. All across the country, Dan, several states taking up voting and election laws now after November. How many are we talking about here? 
Brennan, the Brennan Center for Justice is actually tabulating this, Lindsay, and according to their figures, there are more than 250 laws that are restricting voter access in 43 states. That total includes House Bill 334 in Missouri, as well as the other bills that are working its way through the Missouri legislative process. But again, that is a big number, more than 250 laws restricting voter access in 43 states. And this wow. comes on the heels of one of the highest turnout elections in the history of the country. And most hotly contested as well with, with all the fallout that continued after November. Dan, thank you very much. And let's talk about some of those other states that are passing laws related to voting this week. In Iowa, a controversial law that reduces early voting. The Republican governor there, Kim Reynolds, on Monday signed a bill that reduces early voting from 29 days to 20 and closes polls an hour earlier on actual election day. The bill also makes it harder for voters to return absentee ballots. Officials now can only send absentee ballots if a voter first requests one and ballots must be received by the county before polls close on election day. Meanwhile, in Georgia, a critical swing state in the 2020 general election, the Georgia Senate approved an election bill that would repeal no excuse absentee voting. Under the bill, voters would need an excuse such as being 65 or older, being absent from their precinct, observing a religious holiday, or being overseas in order to qualify for an absentee ballot. The bill aims to undo a 2005 Republican-backed law allowing no excuse absentee voting.